This is the Crossing Bridges podcast, addressing the topics of leadership, criminal justice, and fatherhood. How can we become better leaders? Where are all the daddies? Why is crime at an all-time high? Here is your host, Bayonle Arashi. It promises to be another exciting episode of Crossing Bridges podcast. My name is Bayonle Arashi. It's always my pleasure coming your way with the podcast every week. Today happens to be the episode 13 of the podcast. How excited is that? And I hope you are as excited as I am. Uh, This is a podcast uh, that is designed to discuss the major issues that are burning issues in our society today issue of fatherlessness, issue of high crime rate in our society, issue of lack of leadership, lack of leadership in all sectors, name it, politics, education, um, entertainment, whatever industry you are, we have a lot of people that do not want to step up uh, to that leadership role or the ones that we have there at the moment are not just taking the step. They will see black and they will say it is white. People cannot tell the truth anymore. And it is about time that we start bringing this discussion to the public space and start talking about it. And that is why Crossing Bridges podcast was born personally for me as a correctional officer working in the state, uh, Texas Department of Criminal Justice. uh, The amount of uh, uh, opportunity that I see among the inmates that could be for them to be uh, outside of the world adding a value to the society, adding to the gross domestic product of the United States, adding to their family, creating a better society, creating better home. Uh, But for some of them, due to uh, one or two challenges they have while growing up, probably the fact that some of them did not grow up with a father themselves, they believe they do not owe anyone that responsibility uh, to also pay that back to them and hence they choose uh, the life of crime. I believe we need to start talking about it. We need to start encouraging anyone that has been formerly incarcerated to really, really find a way to change their life, to to use uh, that negative moment in their life, to use that dark moment of their life, that, that dark period of their life as a form of motivation, as a form of inspiration, to use it to inspire the upcoming generation, to make it known that yes, though you have once been incarcerated, you have once lost your freedom, you have once given up your freedom, but you can always, always come back from the dead. You can always come back from beneath. You can always come back from falling down and rise again. It is only when you refuse to take your loss, it is always, it is only when you refuse to make adjustments to those particular mistakes that you made in your life and continue making the same mistake, that is when it becomes a problem. We have all fallen short. We have all missed opportunity at one time. We have all misbehaved at one time. We have all done some sort of wrong at a particular moment in our life. But the fact that many of us are willing to find a correction to use those weaknesses, to use that those dark moments as a form of inspiration to inspire other people. That is why I'm here. I have not shy away from telling my story on this podcast. Most of the time, in the last 12 episodes I have done, bringing guests to you to share uh, their secret with you, bringing fathers, bringing coaches, uh, bringing motivational speakers, uh, bringing uh, counselors, bringing a correctional uh, officer, uh, officer supervisor to tell you stories about their own life, about how they have been able, regardless of the defect, regardless of what has happened in their life, they have used those negative negativity to inspire themselves and to inspire others. And they are using those opportunity to create more opportunity uh, for others. Enough of that today already. I just want you to know that your dream is possible, that there's a lot you can do, that you can achieve anything you set your mind on, that there's nothing that is impossible for you. If you are willing to use your mind, if you are willing to pay the price of success, if you are willing to be patient, uh, to be able to reap the fruits of whatever work you have put in. If you are fortunate to live in this great country called the United States of America, the system has been put in place for you, for you to either succeed or fail. It is your choice. You have to make those choices that you either want to be successful 
or you want to go the other way around. So make a righteous video, folks. Here is the episode 13 of the Crossing Bridges podcast. Excited as usual, like I said at the beginning, to always bring it to you. And today I have a, a very, very important uh, topic to discuss, a topic uh, that I have also used uh, over the years in my own life in my own uh, journey as an entrepreneur, as a young adult, as a as an aspiring leader, uh, to get to where I am today, and that is the, that is the power of written goals. The power of written goals. There is a lot of power in writing our goals down. Um, I just finished, as I mentioned in the last episode, a book uh, by uh, Esther and Jerry Hicks called the law of attraction uh about a week ago and i picked up another one uh, i think is is his first book that i'm reading by brian tracy a great great motivational speaker master teacher a counselor uh, he, i mean this man this book i'm talking about in particular was written in 2006 titled eat that frog an excellent book i'm not even halfway yet it's not a very big book but i already pick up some great great lessons that i have used over the years in my life and that i'm hoping uh, that i can share some of the lessons in that book for you with you today and we can together i uh, use it to help us in our day-to-day -day activity in our day-to-day -day work uh with in, in in whatever industry that we are or whatever sport that we are playing, or whatever industry that we are working, this system works everywhere. Do you have goals? Are your goals written down? It's a different thing for you to, to have goals. Everyone out there that you ask them, they will tell you, oh, I have a goal to build this next year. I have a goal to be able to run five miles in the next three months. I have a goal to go to college. I have a goal to start a business. But believe it or not, only about 3% of adults have clear written goals in the world today. 3%, imagine that out of 100%, only about 3% of human beings, especially adults, have clear written goals. Those these people accomplish five and ten times as much as people or of equal or better education and ability, but who for whatever reason have never taken the time to write out to write out exactly what they want. So a goal that is not written down is not have no chance of succeeding. And today I'm really hoping I can share with you a uh, seven great rule for success. Uh, if you are able to put this on paper, you will have a very, very effective uh, solution to any kind of goal that you have set for yourself. It is very, very important that you set a goal and that you write the goals down. I will give you an example before I give you those seven uh, great rules for success uh, as mentioned uh, by Brian Tracy in his book, eat that frog and, and i'm probably going to make some amend to it as i read it out to you as i give you those steps uh, so that we can put it into real time use uh, of our own life i just want to give you share something with you real quick uh in 2007 uh, i was working as a broadcast journalist with Africa Independent Television in Nigeria, uh, AIT owner, the owners are Dark Communications uh, Limited. They had they own a, TV, a private TV station at that time, the biggest private TV station in Nigeria, and also own a private two private radio stations, Ray Power uh, and uh, Ray Power 100.5 and 106.5. And that was when I started. Um, I encountered a particular man in a uh, public transport, uh, selling a magazine uh the magazine title was winning attitude gold uh this is giving credit to uh my first mentor in the uh self-development space his name is Efe Oposio uh he will be very surprised I'm mentioning his name today he was not actually the one selling this book in this public transport but that was my first encounter uh with into self self-development and self-growth practice. Uh, this person was standing in the public transport, was shouting his lungs off, was telling us about how we can be like Oprah Winfrey of the United States, how, how we can become the next 
uh, Warren Buffett of the United States, how we can become uh, the next billionaire out there. And he, we were all in a public transportation uh, that only uh, the lower middle class can afford. This is not even a taxi. This is not a private vehicle. It's a public transportation that you have about four or five people sitting in one line. But his message really, really resonated with me. His message caught my attention and I invested. Uh, I'm not sure the amount now, but today is the amount I invested, I think is less than a dollar uh, back then uh, in, into buying a copy of that magazine. Um, after buying that magazine, I opened it up and it was a story of Oprah Winfrey uh, that was in that magazine of how he came from a village um, I can't remember this, the city now, uh, Mississippi, I think, uh, and how he was able uh, to find his way uh, into broadcasting. And of course, all his tra all her travails uh, before having a chance uh, to get in a job. But of course, how, why, how he couldn't even get the job of broadcasting because of her color, because she doesn't speak a certain way, but she was persistent. Uh, she wanted it so bad. And eventually she found herself on the screen and today who does not know who Oprah and Winfrey is uh that particular magazine that I bought so a seed uh of goals in me uh, and that day I decided that okay I'm working right now um as a bro as a young broadcaster then I was already a father uh, I already had a two-year-old daughter in 2007 my uh, my my uh, young adult daughter now who is now 18 years old was two back then and i said i need to start planning my life so i wrote it down that day i said i am going to start a soccer academy uh, and i'm going to use a soccer academy uh to help other people because it was one of the process uh, that this person mentioned in the magazine that it is not just enough for you to aspire to be like those great people that he mentioned, uh, like the what next Warren Buffett, the next uh, Oprah Winfrey, or the next Steve Jobs uh, of Apple. Uh, but the fact that you have to attach that your uh, belief, that your thought, that your want uh, into a particular goal. You have to write it down and you have to set a date to it. And that was exactly what I did. I said I was going to own a soccer academy and it was going to help other young people. And I set a day on it and I started. And that is where, that is how Smider's Football Academy was given birth to. And just a year after that, the Midas Football Academy was launched in Nigeria. And a year after that, something that has never, ever happened before in my life happened uh, a friend that i made uh in germany early in in the, in the year in 2006 requested that i bring uh the young players for a tournament in germany uh which i did and the players went for a tournament in germany and denmark in 2009 not just as a participant we also went all the way and won that tournament of course this was happening so very fast that i did not set a goal that will really, really help me from the next one that I have. So the goal that I set was just for the immediate uh, time. I did not set the, I did not set the goal big enough for five years, for ten years, for fifteen years to see what happens after those times. So that as one success is coming, you are able to record new one by writing by, by writing a new one down and achieve another one. So there is a lot of power in writing your goals down. And as I mentioned at the beginning of this podcast, I'm going to share with you seven great rules uh, for success and why it is very, very, very important for you to write your goals down and the power that is in you uh, writing your goals down. There's so much power. There's so much benefit to it. Only if you can put it to work. Imagine only 3% of adults have clear written goals. That is really, really a big challenge for every one of us as a man out there, as a leader out there, either you are already in a leading capacity or you are aspiring to be one. It is very, very important for you to set goals and for you not just to set the goals, but to write it down. Daily goal, weekly goal, monthly goal, yearly goal, 
and so on and so forth. You must have a goal. Once a goal is written down, it is often said you have already put it into the universe. You have already sown that seed into the universe to bring that goal to life. So that goal has 90% chance of coming to reality once it has gone beyond the process of a thought in your head into something that you have to take a pen and a notepad and write it down. That is how powerful the power of writing goals down is. To give it a chance, give it a thought, give it an opportunity, write a goal down for the next one week today after listening to this podcast or write the goal of what you want to achieve for the next two weeks down and then keep looking at that thing that you write it down on. Keep looking at that notepad, that written pad and see how quickly you can be, you will be able to achieve your goal. Haven't said all that. So let's get into those seven steps now. Seven great rules uh, for success as long as you put it on paper. The first of them, of course, is decide exactly what you want. It is a very great, it's the great rule uh, for success. You have to either decide for yourself or sit down with your boss and discuss your goals and objectives until you are crystal clear about what is expected of you in order of priority. It is it is very, very amazing how powerful it is when, once, you, once you make a decision that this is what I want to do. Once that decision is made that, okay, I want to do this, that is the first point of you achieving that particular success that you have written down. You must first decide, what do I want? How do I make this uh, particular goal a reality? But you must decide. After the decision, the next best thing for you to do is to write it down. Write it down. Think on paper. When you write a goal down, you crystallize it and give it tangible form. Once a goal is written down, you have made it crystal clear that this is what I want to do next. And you have made it, you have given it a tangible form. You create something that you can now touch and see. Once it is written down, you can now go back to it every time and look at it. That is how powerful, powerful it is once our goal is written down. You Once you create something, you can see. On the other hand, a goal or objective that is not in writing is merely just a wish. You are just wishing. If you did not write it down, if you, if you are just thinking about it, you are just wishing or you are probably fantasizing. There is no energy behind it. Unwritten goals normally lead to confusion. You will not, you your, your mind, imagine your mind process millions of thoughts every day, millions of thoughts every day. So most of the time, your unwritten goal is probably going to lead to confusion. It's going to become vague. And of course, you're going to be misdirected. And of course, you make a lot of mistakes, numerous mistakes, because you will not be able to remember everything. I am sure if I ask you this morning at eight o'clock this morning, depends on the time you are listening to this, or just last night, there was a thought in your head about what you want to do today or early this morning. But once you wake up, as long as you did not write it down, you forgot about it because you did not write it down. So that's how powerful it is for us to make our goal something that has to be put on paper. You must write your goal down because once that is done, it is crystallized and you now have it in a tangible form. The next step, the step three is going to be as you have to set a deadline on your goal. You must put a deadline on that particular goal. Set some deadlines if necessary on that goal. A goal or decision without a deadline has no urgency. If you just set the goal and they and, and you did not put any part of deadline to it, there is nothing that is that will inspire you to want to get it done. That is why it is important to create to make your goal a, a day thing, a weekly thing, a monthly thing, and a yearly thing. So there are some goals that you cannot achieve in a day for sure. Uh, but there are some that you can achieve in a week. There are some goals that you cannot achieve in a week, but there are, there are some you can achieve in a month. There are some goals that you may not be able to achieve in a month, but you may achieve in three months, six months, or a year. And that is why you must put a deadline 
in your goal. Because once you do that, your goal has real beginning and end in mind. Without a definite let that deadline accompanied by the assessment or acceptance of specific responsibility for completion, you will naturally procrastinate. Yes, if your goal is not does not have a deadline put on it, procrastination is definitely going to set in. And that is the biggest, biggest challenge of all because either you think about it or not, every one of us procrastinates. There is something that we procrastinate about. We, that we cannot do everything. And that was why when I mentioned that book uh, by Brian Tracy that I'm currently reading, I Eat That Frog, the, 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 the biggest lesson I have taken away from me so far I'm still hoping that before I finish it, I'll probably learn more, is that if you have a goal, and that's why it gave it that very, very uh, uh, theatrical title, Eat That Frog, because he said, imagine if the first thing you have to do in the morning is to eat an ugly big frog. And once you do that, you know that you can't do anything worse than that throughout the day. So that you should all, always, always, always confront your biggest task first. That's one of the biggest lessons I've learned from me so far, that your biggest goal is what you should tackle first. Once you wake up and you set a goal for yourself, the first one you should tackle is the biggest one. Moving on now, number four, make a list of everything that you can think of that you are going to have to do to achieve your goal. You have to make a list of those things that will set you in motion to be able to achieve those goals that you have set. How do you want to get it? What is your plan? What is your master plan? As you think of new activities, also add it to your list. That is why it's very, very important to journal. Um, hopefully, maybe in about a week or two, I will give you those uh, four particular key points that one of my mentors that I've mentioned a few times uh, on this podcast, Jim Rohn, uh, said, uh, Amen must live for his children. He said there are four things, but today is not a day for that. But of course, one of them I'm going to mention to you today is, the, is journaling. You must have a journal with you at all time. I am always, anytime you see me or anywhere you see me, there is always a journal somewhere, I promise. If you, if you want to put it to test, the next time you see me somewhere, ask for my journal and you will see it with me. So you also must make that particular part a practice you must make, you must have carry a journal with you at all times so that it will be easy for you to make a list because this particular rule uh, among uh, the seven great rules for success that I mentioned earlier is very, very important for you to make a list of everything that you need to do to get that particular goal achieved. You have to make that list. And once you thought of something else that can that can help you, add it to the list and continue to add it. And that way, it will be easy for you to achieve it. Number five, quickly, organize this list into a plan. Well, a goal without a plan is not a goal. So you must have, after you have gone through the hurdle of setting a goal and you have gone through the hurdle of deciding exactly what you want, you have uh, right. You have written it down. You have set a deadline uh, on the goal, and of course, maybe you are also um, that very smart, and you put a sub uh, sub sub deadlines into it. Uh, you have make a list of uh, how you are going to achieve that goal. Yes, the next thing to do is to make a plan. How do you hope to achieve that goal? What do you want to do? What is your strategy? What are, what are your strategies of getting that goal achieved if it is something that will, that you're going to need money for you know you have to probably do extra work if your 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 salary which most of the time if you live in, in this society is not going to cover for whatever you want to do you know you have to put in extra work you have to do that over time you have to put in that extra hour to be able to get more done in shorter time so you have to make a plan on this uh, particular uh, goal that you have set for yourself. That's the fifth one. The sixth one, of course, is you have to take action on that plan you have made immediately. Once you made that plan, you have to take action. The next thing you need to do, okay, what? How do I? How do I? How do I make this goal a reality? You want to um, start a company, for example. You have thought about your idea. 
you have written it down, uh, you have done research, um, you have uh, create, you, you have thought of okay, I want to I want to create a website. I want to um, start a podcast. I want to do a, a random video every day, just like yours truly started as well. So you must take an immediate action on that plan that you have set in step five. Immediate, you must you must put it to action. What is the next thing you have to do tomorrow? Do you have to buy a video? You have to buy a camera, or do you have to start using your particular uh, phone camera to record for now? What is that particular thing you want to do next? Or do you want to create a website? Do you want to create a social media page? with the handle of your company, but you must take step immediately uh, to fix that particular one. Final but not the least, resolve to do something every single day that moves you towards achieving your major goal. You must do something about it every single day, every day. Like my mentor said again, Jim Rohn, he said, if you put in 12 hours, in your job it is not an excuse not to put in three four hours on your own self to develop yourself because at the end of the day it is that your own self that you are developing that will come out to be the, the, the bigger thing that you need in the future so whatever you want to do once you put in all the hours at work when you come back home no matter how tired you are even if it's only one hour you can put in make sure you put in some time into your own personal growth, into your own personal agenda, into your own uh, personal development. You must do something about your written goal every day to move you towards achieving it. Well, I really hope it works for you and I'm going to give you a further confirmation of the power of written goals to buttress my earlier story as regard my soccer academy. After running the academy for a couple of years back home in Nigeria, and I was also fortunate to immigrate into the United States, in 2021, I went to the uh, annual United Soccer Coaches Convention, and the opportunity was just so enormous. I saw that soccer was growing big in the United States. The, uh, there was a lot of potential. There was a lot of need. Uh, the game was so expensive, uh, as I observe in my in my city in, in Houston. So I decided, okay, I think God is telling me something here. And after the after that particular convention in January in in in, in Chicago, you no, know, in Kansas City, I remember now. I went back to Houston and I decided to register the same soccer academy in Houston, Texas. And guess what happened on April 1st, 2023? That soccer academy, the same dream, the same goal that was written down in 2007 was started again in the United States. So the academy now exists in Nigeria and in the United States. I am not there yet, but it just confirmed to you the power that is in you writing down your goals. And not just writing them down, but following the seven rule that I just gave to you now, writing them down, setting a deadline, making a list of all that you need, all that you think about from time to time, putting it, putting a plan to it, and of course, working on that plan every day to take you toward that towards that major goal. I can assure you that the academy, you will hear about it someday, very very soon. For you out there listening or watching. I really hope your dream come true. I really hope you choose a life of purpose. I hope you find your purpose early in life. If you don't, if you, if you haven't found it, if you need help, do not hesitate to uh, reach out. I will be willing to give you a free 30 to one hour of my time for us to share. I am not definitely claiming all wisdom that I know it all, but I'm willing to share from uh, the little experience I have from living life in one of the in in the toughest way possible um for you with you uh for you to be able to find your path in life because i always believe in what uh in in, in what denzel washington said that he said each one teach one um if we can continue to assist ourselves if we if we take it further from just talking about it and actually put it to work i believe our society our community our state and our country at large 
can only be better for it. I'm always rooting for you. I'm always excited. You are believing you. I believe you can make it. I believe your career is possible. I believe your dreams are possible. I believe your destiny is made to be uh, the best. I believe you can add value to this world. I believe you are a person of value. I believe you have a lot of power in you. I believe there's nothing that you set your mind on that you cannot do. Till I see you guys again, same time, next week, God willing. My name is Bayon Lea Rashid. It has been my pleasure bringing Crossing Bridges podcast your way this week again. God bless you and bye-bye for now. Thank you for listening to the Crossing Bridges podcast with Bayonle Arashi. Your comments, suggestions, and ideas are welcomed. Follow Bayonle on all social media platforms at Bayonle Arashi or visit www.bayonlearashi.com for coaching and speaking engagements. See you next time.